to another, another giant. Questions. The episode we're referencing is simply called The Rock Block. How the title alone made it past Nickelodeon censors is beyond us. We guess by season 9, Nick gave the show free reign to whatever it wanted. Once you get past the overly sexual reference of the title, things don't get much better as the episode plays out. Timmy wishes for his teacher, Mr. Crocker, to disappear. The result of the wish turns him invisible as he wrecks all kinds of havoc in his life. Timmy then reverses the wish, but Mr. Crocker doesn't realize. Deciding not to wear any clothes because he enjoyed the freedom of being invisible, Mr. Crocker roams the school completely naked and in front of children. We've had enough real-life teacher and student controversies to see if this one went a little bit too far. An apple not so subtly blocks his private area, although they show enough details within his hairy chest you have seen too much. Motown. Rocco's modern life probably should have debuted on Comedy Central or Adult Swim instead of Nickelodeon. The content, innuendo, and adult jokes were far more suited to air alongside shows like South Park and Rick and Morty. Of course, Nickelodeon was one of the few animation outlets available in the early 90s, and this is where the show made its premiere. The show took risks right out of the gate with stories about adultery, ringworm, and questionable doctor's visits. Rocco's old town is basically one big adult joke with adult references. In one episode, the characters visit the No Tell Hotel, a scene which was cut from future broadcasts. The name of the common fast food restaurant is known as the Chokey Chicken. Yikes! Even the doctor that Rocco visits is named the Just click subscribe. You'll join the notification squad and join. be the first to know of new content. Also, can you guess which movie is represented by these emojis? I know, right? To find out. My baby fool. Later, clues 
clues from down the line may reveal that Drake and Josh was actually a show within a show. The reality show followed the characters' lives as they dealt with their teenage years and their mixed family life. Some of the biggest clues to the reality show theory actually come from other Nick shows. On Victorious, multiple characters have referred to watching the show, and on iCarly, clips of the show have been shown. Love you, my baby. One of the biggest clues comes from a Love character too, played baby, by Debbie. Nicole Brown. Jay on Drake and Josh Brown played the movie theater manager named Helen Dubois. On Victoria, the too, same baby, character Hall. comes to take over as principal of Hollywood Arts High School. Love if too, the characters on Victoria watch Drake Jay. and Josh and the same character shows up at their school, brother. then this is pretty much a confirmation that Drake and Josh was a reality show set in their connected universes. I know what, Daddy. Get out of my hole. I know. Way beyond our preschool years has been under the microscope of rumors and theories for years. Some of the craziest rumors came when Steve left the show and was replaced by Joe. But people still can't coming up with theories about the adventures a grown man has with his puppy Blue. As rumors of Steve's death in real life were proven to be false, other rumors sparked up about the character and the stories he comes up with. One of the more popular theories involves Steve taking drugs. The character's use of heavy and hard drugs has created Are you a hungry? reality Daddy? for Blue and everything yes, in house comes to life. How else Don't make me a salt and pepper shakers who had a child to Daddy, Daddy. Good girl, bitch. even more drug-induced when Steve starts jumping into paintings and going on all sorts of crazy adventures right inside his own home. These moments can all be seen as drug hallucinations. For all we know, Steve is just lounging in his big chair, letting his mind run wild. You can only imagine the drugs and lifestyle the character got into when he left the house to Joe and headed off to college. I wish for no more breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Just dessert! Timmy Turner's Antidepressants. The Fairly Odd Parents had 10 seasons of happiness and adventures, but it didn't always start out this way. Timmy Turner was not a happy child at the beginning. He had troubles at school, was often neglected by his parents, and he was forced to deal with Vicky, his horrible babysitter. According to a theory, all of these factors led to depression. To help with his depression, Timmy didn't get the help of fairy godparents, but rather was prescribed antidepressants he manifested into his alternate Maybe. godparents. Who knows? Each godparent Timmy has could be broken down into different antidepressant medications. The antidepressant Prozac yeah, is represented by Wanda. Prozac is known for allowing a person to be calm and focused, much like Wanda is in the series. Cosmo represents the antidepressant medication known as Zoloft. This works to make you more giddy and excited rather than depressed, and represents <laughs> the Cosmo acts in the series. The pills are taken in Timmy's room, which just happens to be the place where the fairies appear. Anytime the fairies run out of magic or disappear, it's essentially the pills wearing off. Mm, maybe. Timmy's depression starting to take hold again. Come to think of it, we're getting a little depressed just thinking about this huh. theory. Jimmy Neutron's government conspiracy. Jimmy Neutron is a boy genius who entertained Nick fans for over a decade. Looking back on the series, there were some odd things involving the characters and the town of Retroville. A widespread theory about the show puts everything into a perspective easy to explain. Jimmy and the other children were genetically modified government experiments used to help with military research and inventions. Basically, Jimmy's whole life is a big lie. The town of Retroville is a front with paid actors used to play citizens. This is one of the of all time. An animation block on Nick showed showcased the previews to a bunch of potential new shows. One of the options was Adventure Time. Yeah, that Adventure Time. Uh... After airing on Nick first, the network determined the show was too weird to sign up for a full season of work. What a huge mistake it turned out to be. Cartoon Network swooped in, raised the competition, and Adventure Time is one of the most popular cartoons over the past several years. During this time, Nickelodeon really missed out. Adventure Time officially premiered in 2010. In the same year, Nickelodeon premiered Tough Puppy and Planet Sheen. Those two shows barely extended beyond their original runs and are all but forgotten about today. Hey, you all, would you be so kind as to hang these two young fellers? Red and Stimpy get banned. During the same time period Nickelodeon premiered family-friendly Nicktoons like Rugrats and Doug, we also got to witness the rise of Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Hello. The oddball duo went on crazy adventures, pushed the limits of physical comedy, and 
featured some surreal moments. Long before college students were watching and discussing their favorite SpongeBob episodes, Red and Stimpy's antics were the topic of discussion. The show loved to push the limits of censors and tried to get away with as much as it could. One example of this was the season 2 episode entitled, Man's Best Friend. In the episode, Stimpy beats a character, George, to a bloody pulp. <laughs> the episode to get banned, especially after parents complained about the content their young children were being exposed to. Behind the scenes, more controversy was brewing when the show's creator, John Chris Belusi, stopped meeting deadlines and was eventually fired for his lack of work ethic and skipping out on the job. The show lived on, but found better homes by airing on networks like MTV and Spike TV instead of Nickelodeon. Dear Diary, hi, it's me, Doug. Doug moves away. On the first episode of Nick's Doug, Doug Funny moves to Bluffington with his family. Four seasons into the hit Nick show, Doug and his family would move again, but not out of Bluffington. In a rare move, Disney purchased the rights to Doug and produced their own version of the show for a Saturday morning lineup. The move was truly unprecedented, but it also came with a lot of criticism. Nick lost a lot of their Saturday morning viewers as Doug aired alongside Recess and Pepper Ann. Fans were critical of some of the creative changes the show made, but Disney did what Nickelodeon should have and produced a feature-length Doug movie. Budgeted at only $5 million, the movie went on to make around $20 million in just theaters alone. Disney profited huge off of Doug, and Nickelodeon was left with a huge mistake on their hands. In the end, Disney ended up with around just as many episodes and a built-in audience to enjoy the show. As multiple shows begin making television comebacks and revivals, maybe Nick can correct their error and get the rights to Doug once again. Yeah, brother. I'm sorry, old friend. I didn't mean to be cold to you. Rocco's Modern Affair. After the departure of Ren and Stimpy from the Nicktoon lineup, the network needed a quirky replacement. They got exactly what they wished for with the out there show known as Rocco's Modern Life. Right out of the gate, the show presented viewers with a crazy world filled with outlandish stories and a number of jokes catered directly to adults. One of the very first episodes of the show pushed things to the limit and was banned from TV for nearly 10 years. In the episode entitled Leapfrogs, Rocco's neighbors Bev and Ed Big Head are going through some marital issues. Instead of working things out, Bev decides to set her sights on Rocco to make her husband jealous. The scenes that follow feature Bev trying all types of seduction and using quotes which imply sexual innuendo. At one point, Bev and Rocco share a kiss together just to make Ed jealous. The whole thing makes a mockery of marriage and adultery in general. A few parent complaints later, and the episode was pulled for rotation. If Leap Frogs continued to air, a few more complaints could have had the whole show pulled off the air for good. The episode returned to rotation and can be seen random times while airing on Team Nick's The Splat. Hey, Julie. Hey, Peppy Daddy. It's ready. It's on the dinner table. Thanks. You're welcome. It's right there. Let's eat. God damn, you know how to cook a burger. Let's go outside, baby, now. Let's go here. 
And now I just work on how to cook up a good pizza. And now how to cook up a good burger. To get on my baby bitch whore. And now... We're talking drunk now. Now we're drunk. Done. You're my hoe, and I'm your pimp. He's the manifestation of the yep. Pete. The younger Pete is more daring and does things the older Pete wishes he did when he was younger. By living vicariously through the younger brother, Pete feels more satisfied about the less adventurous life he lives. The next time you I am your preacher, mind, and, and you're you my sin. Yes, yes. I am your. You did it. I am your nun. Well, you're my god. One theory states Nick went to the Big Remake stage to try and relaunch some of their shows that were a little less popular back in the day. For example, the old show Brothers Garcia was remade into Ricky, Dicky, Nicky, and Don. The show Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide was remade into 100 Things to Do Before High School. And then there's the show Marvin Marvin, a show very similar to the journey of Alan Strange. The stories and characters in each of the show counterparts are nearly you're identical You're my to each other. demon. No, I'm your you're demon and you're my vessel. explains it all ended far earlier than it should have. Yes, course, Daddy. Good girl, my whore. My baby bitch whore. My stanky bitch. I know. Lovely bitch. Lovely too. Tell you something. Watch out. My real name is not Wendy Testabugger. Testabugger is my wife's name, that's your name, but my real name is Karen Testabugger. Oh, you good. Love you, Karen. Love you, Karen. You're my whole Karen Testabaga. I know, baby Jaden Kalija. Yes, my Karen Boo. Well, my little cow cow. Yes, Daddy. Good girl, my whore. I know. You a bitchy hoe. Yes, Daddy. I must be punishing bed. You got damn right, old punishing bitch. You got You got damn right, old punishing bitch ass. Let's have another joint. Censorship, believe it or not, but rather the expensive, high-quality CG animations. 
but the show remained a cult classic, especially with merchandise. So how could this awesome show about an alien receive any flack? Well, we'll tell you. The only thing worse than being cancelled is to be mentioned by a defendant during a murder trial. In 2005, a young woman was found murdered in her home and her neighbor was arrested and charged with murder. The killer mentioned a fascination with an episode of Invader Zim called Dark Harvest, in which Zim collects human organs in an attempt to see born human. Needless to say, Invader Zim's reputation suffered after this. However, some witnesses say that his comments remained in passing and were not to be taken seriously. <coughs> I want you to push my fucking temple. Your dick is in charge and you are in charge. Show by the whole character. Thanks, Daddy. You're welcome. My baby boo. My Karen. Well, and we got a story for you. Nickelodeon has a Daddy segment Hall. called Nickelodeon's Random Cartoon, and in 2007 yes, they had their hands on something big. And the Hart's original pilot of Adventure Time was in their grasp, but they turned it down not just once, but twice. Turns out it was just a little bit too weird. You'd think Nickelodeon would be all over this, but in the last they weren't. The pilot went viral, and the rest, as they say, is history. The show totally revitalized Cartoon Network's programming. You wonder if Nickelodeon regrets their decision. What do you hmm. think? Semitism controversy. We know what you're thinking. Rugrats is in here for a second time. Oh yes, friends, this popular show is not free from controversy. Rugrats has been praised for its depiction of Judaism and was popular among Jewish families for its portrayal of the half Jewish family, the Pickles. The show had a Passover and Hanukkah special and gave kids some insights into Jewish ceremonies and family traditions. Arlene Klasky, who is a Jewish woman from a mixed family as well, believed that cultural representation was important. Fans love. So it was quite a bit of a shock when the Anti Defamation League accused a Rugrats newspaper comic strip of anti Semitism in 1998. The outrage happened over a comic strip that featured Grandpa Boris reciting a prayer in Rosh Hashanah services while the protagonist baby, the curious Tommy Pickles, sits wondering what the adults are doing. The strip in question was not meant to be disrespectful in any way, but Abe Fox from the Anti Defamation League accused Boris's design of resembling anti Semitic Nazi era depictions. George to a bloody pole. Nikki 
executives flagged it as too violent, which led creator John Chris Belusi to be fired. Here comes Noah Joy Khan. The only shocking thing about this was that it wasn't banned earlier. As we transitioned into middle school and slowly start to mature, Nickelodeon kept us around thanks to their Teen Nick programming block. A variety of shows featured the great Nick comedy and entertainment we love, but sometimes things went a little dark. Watch to see shocking storylines, mature themes, and some episodes that were downright banned from ever airing again. Before you watch, click subscribe. You'll join our notification squad to be the first to know mm. brand new content. And can you guess which movie is represented by these emoji? Stay tuned to the end to find out. Come on, dude, I said I was sorry. I heard you. Well, stop being mad at me. I'm not mad at you. Next episode, what, I mean, what video should I watch now, can't, on YouTube? Not, next video, what YouTube video should I watch now, on YouTube, of course. Hmm. Who am I? Daddy. You got them right, bitch. I'm your daddy. Good to write your hoe. I'm your daddy bitch. This is how fast YouTube is with Brave. Notice how there's no pre roll ads? And here's how you can see how much time you Fuck spend. off. tragic moments in any Disney movie happens when Bambi loses his mom early on in huh. the self-titled film. All we learn about the culprit is that it was a man. However, conspiracy-minded yeah, Disney fans have come to the conclusion that the perpetrator was one man in particular. Welcome back to the binger, everyone. When we think of Disney movies, they bring to mind charming characters, talking animals, and innocent entertainment. According to some fans, though, that perception couldn't be further from the truth. Detailed examination of Disney's movies by these fans have led to some uh, dark theories. You're my baby. In this video, we're exploring some yes, dark daddy. theories about what's really going on in our favorite Disney films. Fair warning, though, these could ruin some of your favorite childhood memories. Uh. We always assume that Aladdin was set in the distant past. But one fan theory claims that the movie is actually set in the far future, and that future <laughs> takes place after oh. the apocalypse. The roots of this theory go back to the genie. When he's released from his lamp, he says that he's been trapped there for 10,000 years. So, unless he has time-traveling abilities, the genie couldn't know about game shows and all the other pop culture references that he makes. However, genie could know about all that stuff if the last time he was active was in the 1990s. Plus, the theory explains why no one questions the magic in the movie. Magic carpets? That's yeah, just a form of hovercraft technology. Human-like talking parrots? That's post-apocalyptic mutation or advanced genetic experimentation. There's even speculation that the Cave of Wonders is a fallout shelter. The theory's backed up by the movie's video game, too, which included modern elements like a stop sign and an atomic bomb. A whole new world is right. It's so joint. Never growing up. Level one. Like Done, Daddy. Uh, Good girl, my heart. That's not exactly I know. What's going on? I know I'm the whole Daddy. Peter Pan isn't just yes. the leader of the Lost Boys. He's actually an angel who appears to children after they've passed away. It's his job to accompany them to Neverland, which is actually heaven. There's actually some evidence for this theory. 
J.M. Barry, the author of the book Peter Pan is based on, had a brother who passed away at 13. In other words, he never grew up. In fact, Barry is said to have read the book to terminally ill children to alleviate their fears of their short lives ending. All that makes In this theory seem pretty plausible. Baby Karen Pat. The idea that Pan is an angel has That's a sort of bittersweet innocence. I know, Daddy. At the other end yes. of the spectrum is the one that met its end. In fact, in one blink and you'll miss it frame of the film, Philip's sword appears to turn black. Perhaps in that moment, yeah, Maleficent's yeah. dark energy fused with his sword. If Maleficent was still alive and trapped in the sword, it stands to reason that at some point she would have been released. When that happens, Maleficent could go on to wreak all sorts of havoc around the time the movie takes place. In fact, the theory attributes some of the most tragic events of the 14th century to a living and very angry Maleficent. Let's move on to another bad guy focused theory. This one speculates that not only did the Evil Queen survive the events of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, but she appeared in another movie. Yeah, the Evil Queen continued her quest for youth and beauty entangled. The Evil Queen reinvented herself as Mother Gothel, making Tangled a sequel to Snow White. It actually makes sense when you think about it. The characters look pretty similar. They're both obsessed with their looks. They both do terrible things to maintain their beauty. They both understand magic, and if that weren't enough, the dagger mother got However, when he grew taller, and the dwarves realized he it's wasn't one of them, doing. they kicked him Fair out. Enough, baby. After that, Dopey changed his name to Geppetto no and became what? a woodworker. For the rest of his life, he held a torch for Snow White. Yeah. So when he created Pinocchio, he made it look like what he believed and Snow White's child would look like, which explains why Pinocchio shares so many of Snow White's traits. If that doesn't make you rethink both yeah, movies, yeah. nothing will. <laughs> Fans have also speculated about a possible connection between the movies Frozen, Tangled, and The Little Mermaid. In Frozen, Anna and Elsa's parents lose their lives in an off-screen shipwreck. On Facebook, a fan named Beautiful Sin speculated that they were on their way to the royal wedding of Rapunzel and Flynn in Germany. If you look closely during Elsa's coronation in Frozen, you can glimpse Rapunzel and Flynn greeting Anna. So the characters from the two films definitely know each other. If Anna and Elsa's parents were sailing to Germany from Norway, around halfway between would be Denmark. And Denmark is the assumed undersea home of the Little Mermaid. In fact, on Tumblr, Erkma observed that the ship Ariel Pilfer's human artifacts from looks a lot like the ship Anna and Elsa's parents went down in. Ariel's collection is much more sinister when you think about it that way. Yeah, when it comes to Anna and Elsa's parents, the theories don't stop there. Some fans believe that the couple didn't actually perish in the shipwreck. In fact, they made it to an island. And they had a baby boy. And when that baby boy was young, they ended up being sad. And in a Reddit Ask Me Anything, the Frozen directors appeared to confirm the theory. Later, Buck clarified that the connection between the two stories was only in his mind. Winnie the Pooh comes across as the epitome of childhood innocence, yet one fan theory will have you looking at the story completely differently. It claims the story is an allegory for mental illness, and all the characters have specific disorders. Piglet has anxiety, Rabbit has OCD, Eeyore, depression, and Pooh, of course, has an eating disorder. Plus, Christopher Robin is schizophrenic. In other words, the one thing they all need is a decent therapist. Could that be Tigger? Here's a final theory that may completely change your perspective on another Disney movie. In this case, Aladdin. Superfan John Negroni suggests that Aladdin's true hero was Jafar. Jafar saw what the Sultan ignored. There was a terrible disparity between rich and poor in Agrabah. Jafar wanted to fix the problem, but had to stop the Sultan's irresponsible spending to do it. His plan was to take over so he could make Agrabah a better place. So despite the treacherous scheming and creepy plan to marry Jasmine, Jafar was simply misunderstood. He just wanted to save his home from an inept ruler. Instead of fulfilling his noble dream to save the city though, he was thwarted by a confessed thief and con man. Poor Jafar. Which one of these dark theories completely changes how you see Disney movies? Imperfect information. I mean, Jack, things are tough. Jack shot the car. And they've been really tough.
your emotions are heightened up to 11 and you're about to get terrified. Kia. Hold on, I got you baby. This is another joint. Oh yeah, let's get into it. Uh, the city house, why not? Uh, first come, first serve. Oh god. Um, Thanks, baby. We're right into it. You're welcome, my Boss, baby boo. Oh, Anytime, okay. I sex um, you with a queen. All right, two laps, pictures, my beautiful Karen. Test a burger. Oh my god. Thanks. What is happening? Oh god. Attention, boy. Anomalies have been previously sighted in the monitored my house. Baby boo boo. Pay extremely my close attention queen. to the surveillance camera footage. Oh. I know. An anomaly report ASAP when you notice something has changed. Okay. It's like FNAF when the phone guy interrupts you. Okay, I just need to get a feel for the lay of the land. We're probably going to fail this numerous, numerous times. I actually don't know if I'll even pass the level, but sure, it's all a bit of fun, isn't it? Um. Okay, I'm not taking in any of this. Oh my god. My monkey. Which have no joint. Damn, baby. Good girl, my whore. Okay, press play on YouTube. The fuck happened to it? How come it turned off? Fuck. Press play. Oh my God, I Good. Can't. All right. Uh, there's four things. Five, six. Okay. That picture looks like that. Birds. Oh my God, these could be so. Who's disgusting. my baby, this Milk? This room is gonna mess me up. I am. This room is gonna. Give you got them what, Karen? Bitch. Okay. Yes, baby daddy. I've seen it a bunch now. I I kind of get what the rooms look like. Except I didn't realize that that was there the first time, so... I'm probably dead. Okay, this painting stands out. Can these change? Uh, yeah, There's no way it's going to be that subtle at the first level, is it? Everything You're looks... my bitch hoe, aren't ya? Everything looks fine in here. A tragedy is about to unfold on the coastline of West Australia. I, I need your eyes and ears and ears as well. The remote changed! The remote moved! What is this? Living room? Uh, object movement. Send it! Haha, <laughs> send that bad boy! I figured it out! That's so good! Okay, nice, nice. I've got good observations most times. Yeah, when I'm out in public, I'm just like people watching, you know? I recognize everyone's faces. If we see the same person again, I'm like, hey, look at that person. And everyone's like, how do you remember this weirdo? Because I'm clued in. I can't do this on my own. Oh, is there two cups? Three cups? I just realized that they're there. Alright, stripes and no stripes. Got it. Okay, this is all the same. Everything's good. How long do I have to do this for? Oh, picture changed. Picture changed. Absolutely picture changed. A uh, painting anomaly. Send that bad boy. Look, that's just creepy on its own. No one would have this I'm painting here in their house. My that's how in the I know coma. it's off. But Daddy, it's so else. I'll put your push in a coma. Alright, the lotion's good. Man's ready Thank to jack you, off. Thank you, Daddy. You're from Baby Hall. Sometimes man's got to jack off, you know? Oh, Excuse me, what? Hall. Yes, Daddy, I'm your Was whore. Was I here? Uh, yes, my baby, baby boo. Other... Yes. What do we do? What's the sound anomaly? Mother, there's no tutorial for this game. No, not me. Oh, God. Oh, was that just me hitting 1 a.m.? <laughs> Come on, man. You can't do that. It's too scary. What is that? What What are you? Hello? Uh, uh, distortion camera malfunction. Abyss presence. That has to be an abyss presence. That looks like an abyss. Like an abyss is forming under the table. Come on. Full send it. Let's go! Damn, I'm good! Okay, this room, I don't like. This all looks the exact same. This all looks the exact same. I'm getting worried because we haven't found anything in a bit. I wonder if you could just like spam through them, would you actually notice stuff really quickly? I feel like staring at it for too long makes me not notice things, you know? Like if I go back and forth, I'll probably notice something's moved. Is this a sauna? Clean your damn room! It's easier to spot ghosts when things are going to be a mess. But if things are already a mess, I can't help you. My services are not capable of this. What was that? What was that? 
light anomaly? Is there, is there a thing for that? Light anomaly, yes, in the hallway. Oh, thank you for doing easy ones. Thank you. God, flashback at me, though. Get rid of it. Full send it. Let's go. Let's go. Team Ghost. Got it. Do I need to survive until like 6 a.m. for this? Is, if, is this a FNAF situation? We, it's not even 2 a.m. Let's have another join. Dan. I should be up playing Elden Ring huh. at this hour. Not looking around my house for ghosts. Has that always been spinning in that direction? Uh oh. Extra objects in the sauna. Sauna, the sauna putting in some love now. That's good. Get, get it out of here, lads. Well done. Let's have go. another join. Okay, you're sending me a lot though in the first hour. Fair enough, like baby. That's a little unfair. This is hard. I know my, <laughs> I I know my what my baby Karen. Yes, baby. Is giving up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I fucking love so you, you sexy like, hoe. Love you too, daddy. Good girl, Karen.